Hi, thanks for checking out this video. So this is the 16th episode in which we're looking at the 18 movements of the Shibashi Qigong form, also known as Qigong 18, or your Tai Chi Qigong. Okay, so just a quick recap so that we've, we're familiar with the transitions between the moves, but also the names of the different movements. Okay, so we've looked at raising the arms, opening the chest, Painting the rainbow. Separating the clouds. Rolling the arms. Left and right. Rowing a boat on a still lake. Holding up the sun. Looking back at the moon. Pushing palms and twisting waist. On the right. And on the left. Cloud hands. Taking a step forward, scooping the seabed. Looking out at the horizon, pushing the wave. And back. The dove, the pigeon. And then back for the punch. The right. And on the left. Then the wild goose, stretching the wings, and down. And now we're on turning the flywheel or moving like a windmill. So this one's similar <coughs> to looking back at the moon, but there's a couple of different ways we can do this. So once again, we'll be using the, the breathing pattern of when we're raising up, we're inhaling, and whenever we're coming down, we're exhaling. So as we move to the side, at the right side in my case, inhaling, and then we're exhaling down, way up. Well, instead of stopping here, we go all the way around, stretching up and down. So we exhale, inhale, round, exhale, inhale, exhale, and inhale and then sink down in the opposite direction. So go round one, up, exhale, inhaling, exhale, inhale, round, round, each time. Okay, so basically we're getting the movement in the waist and the lumbar as we're spinning round this way. We're getting the stretch, so it's good for stretching the shoulders and loosening up the back. So this kind of movement will help you reduce any injuries as you warm up, strengthening um, and stretching uh, the lumbar, the shoulders, building up the joints in the arms or loosening and nourishing the joints in the arms. We raise up and down. We're sinking down, bending the legs, bending the knees. And the, hand, uh, the eye coordination will be looking Imagine we're holding an invisible sphere. This way, the eyes will follow the arm movements. Coming down, this way, and up. Depending on how much flexibility you've got in the shoulder, sometimes the stretch will be different. It's fine to go up again to this way, round, and then start to stretch, move round this way. Keeping the spine straight for this method, letting your breath, Raise your arms, so as you breathe in, feel the arms lift, around, so we twist, shift the weight to the, and the hips, twist in the lower back, and down. So this is also good for recovery with the upper and lower spine, because it's a gentle movement when it's practiced. If you're doing any kind of recovery with this, or you've got any uh, difficulty in moving, uh, it must be practiced nice and slowly. So again, with this, the, the length of the breaths will determine how long or how fast we're gonna make the movements. So as we practiced the movements up to now, it's been fairly slow and relaxed. So that same rhythm as we've done from the previous movements, been breathing in, relax, breathing in, and we've been breathing out. 
So same when we start to turn the flywheel or the windmill. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathing in. Feel the breath, raise the arms over and then exhale, relax. Down, eyes following the hands, breathing in. And breathe out. Breathing in. So your breath, like an almost pneumatic feeling. Raises the hands and breathe out. Breathing in. And breathe out. Then we can change sides. So when we reach to the far left, exhale. Breathing in. And out. Breathing in. And breathing out. Breathing in. And breathing out. And then up to the side. And then it's that point when you move into the next movement, which we'll look at in the next episode. So again, with this whole circulation, circular movement, it's good for circling the energy within the body, blood, lymph around the body, helping the immune system, helping the circulation. It's a good exercise if you're suffering from low blood, blood pressure, but once again, make sure the movements nice and slow and they're combined with the breathing. So again, with all the other movements, we're combining three things. We're concentration, so that's the mind power. There's the breath and then there's the movement. And wherever the mind is going is where you're directing the chi movement. In this particular movement, the attention will still stay in the acupoint, uh, in the center of the palms. And so you're almost in certain points where you're holding the hands parallel. The two points are opposite each other when we're lifting. And round, you can get that connection. You can almost feel that magnetism between the hands. This way. And back. Round. So from the side, again, I want to try and keep the spine as straight as possible for this particular approach to this movement. So reaching up and down. So although we're dropping, keeping the spine as straight as possible, lower spine, the eyes are following the hands, start to inhale, we lift up, straightening the knees, and round, and down. Just let your breath lift. As we inhale, round, exhale, relax, down. Inhale, and exhale down. Inhale, and exhale. And we can change direction so that up, inhaling, and then exhale down. Inhale, and exhale. Inhaling, and exhale. Let your breath lift your hands, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, and breathing out, all the way up to the right, and then you'll start the next movement. So again, with the breathing, and just recapping on other things, all the other movements, the tongue will be connected, uh, will be touching the upper palate to make sure we've got the connection uh, with the microcosmic orbit around the body, up the spine, and down the front of the body. That acts as a switch, which will begin to open uh, the points, the energy points around the body. The more you practice, that, that's something that will occur naturally uh, with Qigong and Tai Chi practice, continued practice. Again, going back to the breathing method, which we use for all of these. Um, so we're gonna try and breathe in through the nose wherever possible. And obviously, if we've got the tongue touching the upper palate, it's not very easy to breathe out the mouth. But if that's your uh, most comfortable method of breathing, then please, you know, obviously go back to your mouth method of breathing. It's this time of year, there's a lot of, um, you know, pollen in the air, so it's not always the easiest time to breathe through the nose. But the more you practice breathing through your nose, the more that will clear in time. So when we breathe in, we want to use the diaphragm. So that means that we want to try and inflate the belly 
rather than the chest, the upper chest. So we're just breathing in. And we want to imagine that we're breathing, but beyond the lungs and pushing the belly out when we breathe in. And then we can just relax for the exhale because the elasticity of the, uh, the diaphragm, it'll return to its original position and just the air will escape on its own. So that's one extra, one half of the breathing process that we don't have to worry about, which will lead to greater relaxation. So by breathing in and breathing out, we're also massaging the internal organs with this gentle uh, squeezing and pressing as the, the diaphragm comes down. And again, that attracts new blood, nutrients, lymph, what have you, through through the, uh, the internal organs as well. So, uh, so yeah, so that's um, turning the flywheel or moving the windmill. Now, as I said before, there's two methods of this. So this is the one, when I'm practicing myself uh, with the, the shibashi, I like to keep everything quite light. I like a nice relaxed flowing of the, of the, the chi movement in the hands, very subtle, nothing tense. But there's a way that we can do this in order to stretch the lumbar, but will involve a certain amount of tension or strength to support the body as we go around. So that begins exactly the same. So we're coming up uh, to the right side in my case. So we're inhaling this way. But in the past, the past example, we kept the spine straight, roll forward, rolled up. This time we're gonna lean forward. So we're bringing the body forward, keeping the knees straight. In this case, coming down, relaxing the body. So we're just letting the arms spin round forward, keeping the legs straight and then back up this way. So inhale and exhale. Inhale and then exhale. Inhale, and then exhale. So we're still trying to keep the body as relaxed as possible. Come up. But you'll need strength in the spine and a bit of core strength as well to lift up from this position, up as you inhale. But try and get your breath to help you lift on this way. And then when, once we've reached the left, it's exactly the same, but we drop down. Exhale as we come forward to the front and start to inhale. And then exhale down. Inhale. And then exhale. Inhale as you come up. Again, round. And then we'll start the next movement. But those kind of slightly more strenuous movements, I like to keep for stuff like the Eight Treasures and the Yi Jing Jing, where there's more focus on the stretching um, than this one, because I find like the, this particular movement, and uh, similarly with the um, looking back at the moon when we're doing this sweep forward, just adds that little bit of tension. So I like. With, with the rest of the movement being quite relaxed, I like to use just the method of keeping the spine straight. It just seems to be more in line with the movements of the rest of the form. But if, you, if you're building up uh, strength in the, in the spine, in the lower back, then that's a good exercise. And of course, these don't need to be practiced in the form in its entirety. Each one of these that we're looking at is, is an individual exercise. So you could just take it on its own as part of your stretching regime as well. It's, a, it's quite an easy way. But always remember to warm up as well before attempting all the movements. Uh, you can find a warm up on this channel as well as the Shibashi being practiced in its entirety. And once I've completed this series of videos, I'll come back to that and we'll go through it together again uh, with a bit more uh, instruction. Uh, but we'll go right the way through. We won't pick out the individual movements. We'll go straight through with some instructions. So I hope you've been enjoying these and uh, that you're staying safe, keeping healthy, 
uh, look after yourself and each other and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.